Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We are stoked today to have our guest. How many times have you gotten to hear to be uh, someone interviewed who is a Swiss guard uh, for the Pope? We get we have with us Andreas Widmer, who has uh, been a Swiss guard for Pope John Paul II for two years. We're going to talk about that and about his new book, The Pope and the CEO. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Do you know that God has a plan for your life? God has a plan. And the most essential part of that plan is relationship with him. There's a verse that I love that says, I know what I have in store for you. Plans for peace, not destruction. A future reserved for you, full of hope. So, okay, give me the plan, Lord. Let's get off. The, let's get going and we'll, we'll get, get to work. I uh, know there's one more sentence, and then it's then the Lord says this: "If you seek me, I will let you find me." And then He says one more thing. He says, "If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me." So the Lord has a plan for your life. The first and most important part of that plan is to know for you to know Him, and uh, and the second part of that is for you to become like Him. So. Uh, and then the third part of that is, what is the practical application of my plan? What What is God calling me to do for work? Who should I marry? Where should I go to school? You know, that sort of thing is the practical working out. And God wants to walk alongside you in this adventure. God has an adventure. What could be more adventurous than to walk alongside the creator of the universe, the, the guy who made quasars, you know, and dinosaurs and grizzly bears and made you? So God has a plan for your life, but the most essential part of that plan is just to have a relationship with him and then to walk alongside him as a friend because a friend doesn't know what his master's doing and learn to abide in his will because you're in, when you're in his will, you're in the middle of a big adventure. You're in a story that's made just for you. And we have someone with us today, Andreas Widmer, who's, gonna, who's a former Swiss Army guard at the Vatican and is now, I'm going to see, I'm going to limit his credentials. Andreas Widmer is an entrepreneur, professor, business coach, popular speaker, and author with 30 years business experience in international business strategy, economic development, and entrepreneurship. Andreas is the founder and director of the Arthur and Carlisle Carla, Carlis Choke Center for Principled Entrepreneurship at the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. So, Andreas, man, talk about credentials. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you, Bear. That's a mouthful. It's the, it's the Art and Carlise Sioka Center. Okay, Sioka. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's how they pronounce it. Wonderful people and great benefactors. We're, we're just so glad. You know, we, we tell, tell, tell people how you and I bumped into each other, how we got to know each other. So, we met, of all places, in Indiana far away from Bo we met in the middle no actually it's more on my side <laughs> you had to go further than I had. yeah I, I was we met, at, uh, we met last June uh, in Indiana at our Sunday visitor when we were both you and I were both doing a TED talk or what they call an OSV talk and so we spent a few really beautiful days together prayed together celebrated ate together and went through a lot of stress together getting these talks got, done and what was the most important part of all of that well, the fellowship. I thought it was the cigars at the end. Oh, yes. <laughs> we did. You know, when the, the pressure went away, it was palpable. After we did the talk, because when all the cameras are on you and they don't need two takes, it's like one thing and you do it, and you have 15 minutes. And remember the clock right in front of you? It's yeah. very stressful. And so when the stress, when we were done that afternoon, we all went out and we had a drink and had a cigar. That was really some, uh, some of us went outside into the 95 degree heat and had a cigar. <laughs> but you know what? I, I was, you know, you speak all over the world. You've spoken you've, all, all, all over. And, I, and I've done do a lot of speaking. And But there was something about that when they said, now there's over a million dollars worth of cameras here. Uh, we want to do this in one take. 
you're going to stand on this line, you're going to look at that director, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And then when they're all done, they said, and you're going to be fabulous. It's like, really? <laughs> you play all this stress on us, but don't worry, everything's going to be fine. With me, though, I, since I'm so special, we got to take two takes. We started, I did one sentence, and I forgot where I was, who I was, uh, and so I said, every surfer has a wipeout every now and then. Let's start over. So that let, they, they let me start over, and then it just kind of kind of went from there. But also, oh, it's they, a yeah. super experience, and I was just as nervous as the next guy. And I don't think you, no matter how much you talk, something like this is going to make you nervous, and that's fine. They should have just said, just go up there and talk, but it was all of that. Exactly. Uh, yeah, So, but it was so great to meet everybody. And, uh, yeah. and plus, you know, the night, so I flew in, jet lagged like crazy get go oh good i get to go to sleep and then we had thunder and i mean we had like how what was the wind storm like that night yeah it was one of the great summer storms they had in indiana and then the fire alarm goes off in the hotel and yeah <laughs> yeah there and was the, wind. and the electricity goes out all night remember yeah remember there was that? wind coming in through the windows <laughs> even though they were yeah. closed but what what but uh, that's just all uh uh all part of the great adventure and uh and so it was really great getting to know you and i said i got to have you on my show and we've been trying to get this this show recorded for ever since then yeah so i'm glad you're here with me now you know one of the coolest things th this book the pope and the ceo john paul II's leadership lessons to a young swiss guard so beautiful such a beautiful book i've only gotten to skim it because i just got it yesterday but such a beautiful book what what tell us about how you're 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 in, you're in Switzerland. You're you're in your nineteen, you're nineteen or twenty or something like that. What in the world? How did you end up becoming a Swiss guard protecting the Pope? That's just so gnarly. There, I got. I became a Swiss guard for all the wrong reasons. Let me say first, <laughs> I was. I didn't figure life out until it took a while with me. I'm a special case. God, God needs. Uh, I'm. I'm getting like several tries at life. Like God, I have to keep starting over because yeah, I, me too. Yeah, I'm, I yeah. have a long, uh, as, as they say, a long line uh, in in Switzerland. They say you have a long line when you you don't understand something right away. <laughs> but no, I so look. I grew up in a in a small village in Switzerland. I'm the youngest of six kids, and I quite frankly just couldn't find my way. I have some, you know, I have ADD, learning disabilities like dyslexia and stuff. I'm not your poster child for academic achievement, let's say. And that just made me feel like when I was a kid growing up like this, that I was just worth nothing, you know? And I had a very bad self-image. And what do you do when you have a self-bad image? You start to become a tough guy and you, you know, you fight. But you're how, how tall are you? I'm six foot nine. So don't and fight so, with Andreas, first of all, everyone. <laughs> six foot nine, 250 pounds. You know, I can fight. I can fend for myself. Were you the tallest uh, person in your village? Yeah, with my dad. With yeah. your dad, and, yeah. and and I just got to ask you this question: What elevation was that village? In my in, it was in, about in, a thousand. So it was not a huge, a huge. It was about a thousand meters or so. So it's, three thousand like, feet. Yeah, because this, you know, the Swiss they don't live up there. You you live in a more temp lower, so it's more temperate. So yes, and anyway, so I. I didn't figure out what to do with my life. I just was basically just failing at one thing after the other until I went into the military. We have a militia. Everybody goes. Everybody has to go to the military. And oh, that's the first thing I excelled at in my life. And they asked me to go, you know, because we have a militia, I had to go in on the bottom. And then they said, okay, you stay, you become an officer. And I'm like, whoa, that's cool. You know, it's the first time somebody affirmed me in something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I learned from a friend back home to say, who said, hey, guess what? I'm, I'm a bodyguard. And like, well, that's the coolest thing you can yeah, possibly do. Yeah, it is. Do. It is. That is cool. You know, when you have the bug in the ear and the gun in here, I mean, I'm in. You know? Yeah. And I, so I, I basically signed up for this without knowing anything you about didn't know, it. You didn't know the, you thought you were going to get to have the bug in the ear, the gun in your pocket. You didn't know about the crazy cool clothes you got to wear. And, and I didn't <laughs> think of a, spy, of a halberd, of a spike and a funny uniform. So I basically just applied. The guy said, this is where you apply. I'm like, I'm so in. I'm going to do this. And then I started to learn more about it as they then accepted me. So I had oh. to give them all my data and everything, but it's pretty public in Switzerland anyway. Once they wrote back, and this is of course before the internet, uh, once they wrote back, I learned that, okay, it's the Pope that you protect. protect. Can you imagine we did that, that kid and I, we never even talked about who you're protecting. 
You're basically oh my god! Saying, really? I'm I'm a bodyguard. That's you know being a it's tough cool. kid. And that's you're a cool. bouncer exactly. for the Pope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so and so then I learned. Okay, it's the Pope. Well, I have nothing against the Pope. I didn't really understand anything about the papacy or so. And then it's so then I also learned it's a foreign legion. So if I go there, I have to do, I have to give up my Swiss citizenship because you can't go a, serve a foreign head of state. At the end, it was all good for me because they would let you back. You know, it's not like right. they it's formality. You kind of. come back. It's a formality. You give it up while you're there. Yeah. And lo and behold, they accepted me. And if I, you know, if I would have known there what the chances are of this, the selectivity ratio of how low this, the chance was that I would get in, I don't think I would have had the self-esteem to actually apply. I wouldn't have applied. But I didn't know, and I applied, and I just played along and gave them what they needed and they and did the tests and everything and they accepted me and then uh, and then i told my parents so and so so they must have made their decision based on good looks then yeah of course yeah you always say that it's, it's beauty and charm was the, was the key to get it no they liked uh, they definitely liked my size and my uh, performance in the military they liked it yeah that's it's just so awesome we're talking with with uh, andreas widmer he is uh, oh, I have all these credentials. He was a—he oh. uh, was the. Uh, let's skip the he, credentials. He was, yeah, let's skip the credentials. No, but the coolest thing is he was—he was in the Swiss Guard protecting Pope John Paul II, Saint John Paul II, yeah. and is now active in entrepreneurship. Did you know that uh, as a CPA, and you probably already know this too, Andreas? Is that, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this when we get back. Is that so many of my clients that I would say are entrepreneurs—they're not someone who manages a business, but someone who has a vision and births the vision uh, business. It seems like most of them have ADD because they're 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 thinking outside the box. They're they're exactly. they're the ones seeing what other people don't see. We're going to be right back with uh, with Andreas Widmer, and he had promised us he's going to yodel. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wasnick adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at Deep Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to Notre Dame fcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul. Both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com, and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, i got to remind you, we have something so special that we've been working on, and that's the Bear. It's the Bears School of Manliness. It's a three-year curriculum that you can go through with us as other men. Uh, you become a part of the man cave. And we have a, a monthly, tw- twice a month meetups. 
and we go through this curriculum together. But what's really special is you can lead your, your sons through this curriculum too. So we invite you to go to deepadventure.com and join up at Bear School of Manliness. We have with us Andreas Widmer. Uh, he was St. John Paul II's uh, bodyguard. He was part of the Swiss Guard. And uh, in Hawaii, Andreas, everyone here in sixth grade learns how to play the ukulele. So was in sixth grade, did you learn to yodel, or what's the whole thing? Is yodeling? I'm not, I was born uh, you knowing how to yodel. <laughs> No. You, you were born with it, yeah. It's part. It's First time you, you hold a hammer and you use a hammer, everybody you, learns to yodel. As soon as you miss the nail and hit your thumb, you learn to yodel? Okay, okay, I got it. Well, we would like to know, uh, what was your personal experience with, with... You had such a unique view of him, you know? Yeah. What was your personal experience with the Pope? Uh, <clears throat> so, my personal experience was that he, the best I can express it there is that he was the most fully human person I've ever met. I, this can be a long discussion. I, I sort of resent the fact that, that the, uh, I love, to me, he was St. John Paul all along, but I resent the fact that they're whitewashing him in a sense of saying, did he make noise when he walked and he never got angry and everything? That's not true, okay? Right. He was, the, the, he was a manly man and the most human being I've ever met in my life he was a real guy, and I was, remember this, there, I was impressed with this guy. I show up as this tough guy, this 20-year-old, I just went through military training, and I was, I was a rough guy. He impressed me. The first thing is like, I'm meeting him. He called me like in a, in a moment of weakness in a sense, but he showed the kind of tenderness to me that was a manly tenderness of of like saying, I will pray for you, and this you're gonna get through this, and you know I'm glad you're here, and let's do this. And to sort of encourage me in that sense, I started to really admire him, and he became, in a sense, my role model while I worked with him, because I felt that he, I, I remember thinking, whatever this guy has, that's what I want. Mm. And that was, that was my experience. I now project a lot back to it, um, of, of adding things of insights and so on but I remember very clearly I was like whatever this guy has is what I want because his humanity is what touched me very deeply well you, you have a quote in your book I'm just going to jump right into it about that and you know that's what God calls us to be is to be living epistles that people I, I remember when I gave my life to the Lord I walked into a, a prayer group and I just said I want to be I want whatever these people have and of course yeah. it was Jesus but you quote him here in chapter one about knowing your vocation and uh, and he and he speaks of humanity whatever you shall be in life whichever calling you choose because we participate in that choice remember that the fundamental calling of a human being is to have humanity and you must always realize that fundamental calling always and everywhere I fulfill my calling to the extent that I have true humanity. Only one who is truly human is truly a child of God. We can spend the rest of our time just trying to understand that. Tell me what that, why you put that quote there and what that means to you. I can speak as a guy, as a man, who made a lot of mistakes. And what happens in, a, in your time of conversion is that you start to reject those rightfully those changes but then in and you go to confession and you also one thing is god forgiving you you have to forgive yourself right and you see i was a total idiot i i admit that in many things in many aspects of what i did and the humanity is that jesus christ became fully man and in this fully god and he's embracing all of this actually including my, my mistakes in the sense that we're wounded, and God and God comes and embraces the, the a whole wounded person. You don't have to be without wound for wounds for Him to die for you on the cross. John Paul was able to bring this across, which what he means by humanity is all of humanity, right? That we're getting saved with our faults and with our sins, in the sense of that Jesus died for us with all of that. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that includes that if I can have a sliver of the of the love that God has for me, for me to give forgive myself too, to forgive you know, and to understand who I am, that's a lifelong project that we're all working on as guys. And I think that's what he's that's what this speaks to me. That's what I hear out from what John Paul says. 
about that we have to bring our humanity into our holiness mm. uh, because became, because God became man and therefore man is something good and redeemable. Yeah, of incomparable worth. I remember, uh, Andreas, when I was 19, I went to a Catholic charismatic prayer meeting. My mom said she'd buy me a new pair of blue jeans if I went. She had already <laughs> gone a few times. And I walked in there and I saw something so special happening. And then uh, the next week I had this intre- incredible conversion experience of just, just God just loving me. Uh, I had that experience of God, of the, the light, the love, the power of the Holy Spirit just just exploding within my heart. But every little area of inadequacy and of sin, he opened every little door and forgave and forgave. I could just say, oh, you, thank you, Lord. Oh, you forgive. Then I, don't go in there, Lord. And then I just felt that sense of forgiveness. But then my dad was saying to us, who eventually became Deacon Greg Wozniak, he said to us, well, what, what's happening? What happened there? And well, we started to tell him, he goes, well, uh, in, 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 a, in a moment of weakness, he said to uh, Chuck DeBow and, and uh, Bob Schwartz, why don't you guys come over sometime and we'll talk about this. And they said, okay, and they showed up three days later. But my dad kept saying, I'm just not worthy, I'm just not worthy, I'm just not worthy. And I remember Charles DeBow looked at him, or maybe it was Bob Schwartz, but one of the two of them said, it's a come as you are party. You know, come as you are. God, God accepts you right where you are in your humanity. So yeah. often... Andreas, I got to tell you, when you go into a church, you feel like there's a bunch of. The, so often, you feel like the men there are are neutered. Yeah. They don't feel free to be themselves. I mean, like when you and I sat outside and had that whiskey and, and a cigar, that was two men. We didn't have to leave our humanity behind. Quality time. To be fully impressed with Christ, to be fully right. accepted by Christ. See, this is what I mean. Also, in, in we're whitewashing, we're, we're neutering the faith in a mm. sense when we also. Th- Start, we start to portray saints as if they were not human. But you know what? Unless you're human, you can't become a saint. There's only one way to holiness in the, it, it, for for a, for a uh, uh, for man, and that's through humanity. Mm-hmm. If you don't live as a human, then you're not going to be a saint. Right? We we are not angels, right? And so we have to go through this and find our way through our embodied spirit, in a sense. Yeah. To to reach holiness, and and. Again, to me, this is so significant that God chose this human body to be incarnate in, which mm. means the entirety of that is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Even uh, Jesus being all God and all man, he probably had indigestion every now and then. You, yeah. know, what, you know what I mean? He experienced <laughs> a lot that we experience, yeah. and, yeah. And, and, and he, embra- and he, and he embraced and our... It's a, the, difference, the difficulty, what I had to learn is instead of abhorring some of my impulses and trying to suppress it in a, in, mm. a, in a negative sense, I understand my impulses. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I almost love them like children, but I don't let them do what they want to do. So, you know, there's mm-hmm. a difference yes. in this. Yeah. Because one of this, one of this leads to the suppression of all of this, which just creates a pressure cooker. That's not a good thing. Right. And um, what you do is you, you, you manage all of these impulses that you that God gave you these instincts and everything the whole body and we are are meant to be stewards of it and um, and that's something that is a beautiful thing and that you treat it like like the best I can say is I treat this like my children and where I I scold them when they need scolding yeah I manage when you know to do to for them to do do good when good is called for right and you know the the our walk with the Lord is is uh well, the key to all of that is to bring your humanity to Jesus. Yeah. The key to this isn't to like hurry up, try hard, and, and appease God. It's to become like God, and that only happens when you spend time with Him. It's like yeah. people come to me, what should I do? I'm going to come surfing. What should I do to get ready? Or how, what can I do to become a better surfer? And I go, well, go surf. There's no substitute for time in the water. And the same thing is true. There's no substitute to spending time with the Lord, praying the Liturgy of the Hour, reading really great books like reading the catechism is a great place to start yeah. but reading reading the rites of the early the, the writings of the early church father of john paul ii um just uh meditating and being in the presence of the lord throughout the day what shirt should i wear today lord nothing's too small for him you know um so so throughout the day to have just be abiding in god's presence and when you do that little by little these changes take place and you don't even know it it's like uh, uh, in hawaii tourists will be here and it's a cloudy day, 
and they get a sunburn. They don't know that even though they don't see the sun that it's there. And so often when we're praying or, or doing, walking in our life, we're not aware of God's presence. We're like, Lord, where are you? But he's there. And if you spend time with him in prayer and receiving the sacraments, you're going to get a spiritual suntan. And the problem with that is, Andreas, is that this is some great inspiration the Holy Spirit gave just to me. And then I realized St. Augustine plagiarized me years ago. <laughs> you'll, find, you'll find those in his writings. <laughs> we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure and our, and our guest Andreas Widmer, uh, Swiss Army Guard for John Paul II, St. John Paul II. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite our women out there, our mama bears, to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and uh, support our ministry in your prayers and uh, with your financial blessings. And you receive from us so many good things. You receive early release of all of our radio shows uh, the video version, you get ex access to all 20, I think there's 26 episodes now of Long Ride Home and many other things, so we invite our mama bears to come and be part of our community. We're talking with Andreas Widmer, and we've talk been talking about how God wants us to be fully human. He likes humans. You know, he became one. We know he likes us. And that our first vocation is is to just, our discerning God's plan for our life, our first vocation is just to be, to be, in relationship with him and to be his friend. You know, he said, I won't call you servants anymore because the servant doesn't know what the master is about, but I will call you friends. And he said, I, you are my friends if you do it, I command you. Because that God's will is, is basically the same thing as saying God's will. So now that, now that we're in this relationship and we know that God, like you quote Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Each of us, at the moment of our conception, even if that conception was in the, in the very worst of things, or perhaps even a rape, from the moment of conception, God infused you with a spiritual, rational soul totally unique from anyone else that's ever existed with gifts and callings that go, that go together. And God said, you know, God said, he said, um, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Repent means to rethink. God's not going to rethink he gave you gifts, and he also gave you some challenges that help direct your gifts. You know, where you're limited in some ways, it narrows where you're going to go with the gifts that God has given you. And he's given you calling. How, tell us about how we proceed into really knowing God's calling for us. Uh, there's different levels, different depths, but tell us about yeah. that. So, the, the, as you said, the universal calling is for us to be friends of God, to be saints. The goal of life is to go to heaven, right? That's it. That, and be forever with God. The Baltimore Catechism does a very good job on that. That's the, pri that's the universal vocation. To know, lo primary... to know, love, and serve God in this world. I yeah. memorized it. I See, that, what is, is, your that, that is irreplaceable. We're making Baltimore a mistake. Catechism. Yeah. We're making a mistake to drop that because yeah. this is stuff that you just need to know. 
it's like putting your gun together in the military. You should just know it blind so that right. when you need it, you have it. This is like stuff like that. I think that's right in the Didache it says that, that we should be able to put our bun to, gun, gun together as blind. <laughs> no. anyway, you know, sorry. But God, you know the so Psalms are like this. The Psalms are like this where, where, they, yeah. um, where you should memorize them. Anyway, so th th then we have a primary vocation, which is our state in life, the, the priesthood, marriage, uh, single life, uh, consecrated uh, religious life, and so on. And then our secondary vocation is actually what we do for work. And so it helps. I work with a lot of students every semester to, to figure this out, to say first, second, third priority. You do the thing at once at the same time, but you have to keep in mind the, the, the ranking order of these objectives, to go to mm. heaven, to, to have a state of life, and to work every day. Now, this, this is a ranking order of, of your calling. And so I, of course, work a lot with people on the on the work life, like to say, what's you know, what job are you doing? What company? What kind of career are you going to choose? And there I, I try to work with people to say, look, God is to very, very few people. God is going to say, listen, I need you to move to, you know, Antarctica and start, you know, a seal farm or something like that. And you've never even left your country. So very few people. God equips you for what you need to be the saint he needs you to be. And just like you just talked about, and I, I use the terms talents and non-talents. So God gave me certain talents. And I, you know, a talent is, a, is an attribute that can be a positive attribute. Like my, my height, he's the, he doesn't want me to be a horse jockey, I tell you that. Because right, he closed that door. He opens and closes the door, babe, depending on the gifts and, and, the, and the limitations. Exactly. Yeah. I look at some of my challenges, like I have ADD and, and dyslexia. I regard that like my, my height. You know, on one hand, it's a challenge. On the other hand, it's a benefit. Yeah. So I play much better basketball than I do horse jockey. So mm -hmm. what, what God w w will do with you in giving you this, I compare it like somebody giving you, you know, a, a box of crayons that you can be creative with. And what God wants you to do is to not take one crayon and only do your whole life with that one gift of his. Mm -hmm. God gave you all of these crayons. And then some of these bright colors, which are your great talents that are obvious, like you with numbers and, and understanding the, the accounting and everything. But God also gives you darker colors. And those are the things where, where I paint with my ADHD or with my dyslexia, which actually is something that plays into my entrepreneurship. But, yeah. I, and, but let's also say God gives you certain illnesses so, or, or he allows certain illnesses which amount to as much as having a darker color. Maybe some of the parents are not ideal. Maybe you have an idiot sibling or, or you know what I mean? Like all these kinds of stuff that can happen in your life. And I consider those to be the darker colors in the, in the box of crayons. Mm. The point is not to just, the, the, the point of life is to, to paint with all the crayons God gives you. And then the question becomes who you're, who you're drawing for. The goal of life is to use everything God gave you and draw and paint with broad strokes a painting for God that you can give back to him at the end of life. And that is what holiness entails. And there's no way to get there unless you're using all your crayons. Yeah, and you know, and holiness means to be set apart. And so to, so God has set you apart. He's given you gifts. He's given you limitations. It may not be physical or mental or emotional yeah. limitations, but certain things in your life. We, we start our day off here, my wife and I, by... We go out and get a cup of coffee. We pray part of the liturgy of the hour together. And then I, we sit down by the beach, and we pray briefly. And I, and I always pray, Lord, open doors and close doors. It's really important that God close doors too. And then I always pray for my wife that her wildest dreams will come true. Because God has an adventure for us, and those dreams, Absolutely. those wild adventures uh, are because God's wild. You know, people go, oh, I'm going to go out in nature. I'm going to get out in the wilderness and get close to God. Well, somewhere in the world, wilderness is the word wild. And so when we give God free reign on our lives, get ready for the ride of your life. And, and that may not be just, you know, the circumstantial things you'll find yourself in, but there's a great inner journey that God will have for you too. But a big part of knowing God's will is where, where has he owning, you know, there's certain crayons God didn't give you. You know, so you have to use those gifts that God has given you. And, you know, the thing is, is the Bible says, I will give you new and right desires. I'll, put a new, I'll give you a new heart. Heart, and yeah. so God, so it's not just your gifts and talents, but it's your desires. You know, what is it that, I remember, Andreas, when I was in Baylor University as a junior, I took a radio class. 
And I became discouraged because I said, well, so how, if I wanted to do radio, where would I start? Well, you're going to start by selling advertising. And I thought, well, I don't want to do yeah. that. I need something more practical because I already had a vision of being a father, even though I didn't know who I was going to marry. And I said, I need to get a, I need to be a hired gun. I need to make a good living. I need to be able to take care of my children and my family. Uh, and then, of course, I had this natural inclination to go into business and into the CPA world. But, but um, even back then, I had this desire for radio. And though, even though it was years and years and years and years later, then this opened up. So, yeah. um, so th- there is this adventure, and there are, are these twists and turns. You know the, the Sistine uh, Museum, those beautiful tapestries? Yeah. I'm sure you've heard this and are, uh, uh, of this, but if you look at those tapestries, like I had the opportunity to do not there but someplace else, if you look at them from the back, they're just a massive confusion and knots yeah. and dead ends. Uh, we tend to look at our lives from that perspective. We don't see the end result that God's wow, weaving into beautiful. our lives. And so, so no matter what the confusion is in your life or how many times have you gone, oh, Lord, please make this happen. I want to marry this woman. I want to date this person. I want to buy this house. I want to get this job, and it doesn't happen. And we look at God and say, God, what are you doing wrong? I thought you loved me, you know. It's only until years later that we realize, oh, Wow! Yeah. Thank God, you know that I, I that I prayed and said because you know when we say to Jesus, "Be my Savior and be my Lord," we always kind of just run through that Savior and Lord. We forget what Lord means, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So um, we're talking with Andreas Widmer. He's a he's a Vatican was a, a Swiss guard for John Paul Saint John Paul II, and he is with the. Uh, can you say it because I can't pronounce it very well? The it's center the that you art were. art and Carlis Sioka. Center for Principled Entrepreneurship. And the Catholic University of America in, in Washington, yes. D.C. Do you ever go to the Napa Institute meetings? I do. Uh, I went there this summer, uh, and now we actually have a Principled Entrepreneurship Conference coming up in October, mid-October in, in New York. So they also New have York. a New York event. And I'm yeah. actually going to spe- be speaking there um, about Michael Novak, you know, the, the famous um, Catholic theologian. And he actually, made, most people don't know this, but he was my first hire at this center. So I hired him when he was 80 years old. Oh, wow. He came back from <laughs> retirement, and he worked with us for three years before he passed away. Oh, was, uh, Andreas. How wonderful. We're talking with Andreas Widmer. And if people want to find you, by the way, how, how can they find you? Very easy. If you do Widmer and Catholic University, I'm very easily findable. But I also have a website called andreas-widmer.com, and that's the website for my latest book. Andreas, A-N-D-R-E-A-S, and his last name is W-I-D-M-E-R. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be back with Andreas Widmer and more of the uh, conversation about uh, the gifts and callings of God. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, You can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? 
I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we're so stoked to tell you that uh, our YouTube channel is got has so many followers and there you find our radio shows the video version of our radio shows you watch cindy and i we have a special channel within our channel called uh, adventures in paradise uh, all of the entire catechism i taught through all i taught three years and went through the whole catechism uh, on the beach uh, every day and all of those videos are there in sequence and then also long ride home uh our tv show our motorcycle tv show is up on prime video it's also on ewtn every week but if you want to power watch a uh, long ride home you can go to uh, uh, prime video and you can watch right now there's uh, 22 episodes up but if you become a member at deepadventure.com of the man cave or the bears uh, or, or, or the uh, um, mama bears then we send you the the latest uh, TV show sometimes a year before it even airs on EWTN so right now we're up to episode 26 so you can get have access to all those and then just kind of sneakily what it is you get uh, you get to unlock the YouTube version of, uh, of that show and so while your brother-in-law is walking through the house you can just sneakily turn on our TV show and and he'll start wondering what is this about motorcycles and next thing you know he's being um, uh, evangelized so a great way for the Monica's the St. Monica's out there to evangelize we're talking with Andreas Widmer and he is the author of the book, The Pope, and The Pope and the CEO. Is it with an and an ampersand? The Pope, the CEO, and uh, it has a forward by George Weigel, so you know it's legit. And, uh, and his, his two, what two years being with the Pope taught him about leadership. So now, so we, as we discern our vocation, tell us about leadership, not management, but what is leadership? How do you define leadership? And, if we, and er, everyone, God's calling us all to be leaders. Whether you know yeah. it or not, you're a leader. Someone's watching you. Someone's following you, either for the good or for the bad. So, so John Paul had this had this way of saying this story um, about what it means to be a leader is to um, love your uh, your employees, let's say, as in, in a company or, or or the people on your team. Except that love is a weird term in our language. It's been overused and, you know, you love pretzels, you love your dog, you love your wife. Um, and that's, that's a, that, that becomes a very squishy term. Italian isn't like that. And, and John Paul always pointed that out, that the kind of love that you would, if you would want to say, uh, like if we work together, and you're, you hire me into your company, the way you tell me in Italian that you love me is you would say ti voglio bene i want your good which is actually what love is ti voglio bene and john paul could never get enough of that expression because he says what's the good you want for them the highest good i want for you and i could possibly want for anybody is for them to forever be happy with god and he says therefore when you love people and you work with people you tell them ti voglio bene and in that sense, I wish heaven upon you. And then if you're doing that, and why would you ever engage them in anything that would move them even an inch away from heaven, from their path to heaven? And he says, that is how you do leadership. Mm -hmm. The people you lead, you want their good. You, you wish them into heaven. And that tells you the path you're walking. Not always everybody's going to like it, but it's because you love them that you bring people on that path. I, th I think it's a beautiful way to, to see this. It's just so profound. You know, uh, Thomas Aquinas defined love that way. It's willing the true good for the other. But John Paul II also said that love is self-donation, in mm. essence. So it's, it's not, it's to wish, but also to do for others, yeah. to, th by laying down your life for them, uh, their, tr their true good. So it's not just a wishing, it's a, it's a, it's stepping across the line and, and, and giving your of yourself in a way that will... Yeah. One of the things, again, that he, uh, I learned or I overheard him, uh, I'm not sure if I read it or I heard him say it, but basically the bottom line is they asked him, you know, when you show up somewhere, people always think like they, you're the reason why they got up in the morning, you know, because you pay attention to the person and mm. you're, you, you might be 
in in a mil million people and the person in back in the, in the middle of it thinks like you're talking to them why is that and then what are you doing and he says it's very simple I'm, it's not me i basically before i go into a meeting before i give a talk before i meet somebody i pray for the holy spirit and i say lord you love these people or this person or they wouldn't exist if if, if yeah. god doesn't love you you snuffed out like that and and he says my prayer is this lord let me see this person like you see them mm. with your eyes lord let me love them the way you love them and he says that's what i do before i go into a meeting before i meet somebody or before i talk to a million people and i'm convinced that that is the reason why people feel like this when they met him that and, and i myself felt like this like i felt like he got up in the morning just to talk to me mm. i remember a long time ago i began to pray this prayer as i was just in my life lord tell me secrets just the good secrets about this person and but it, but it would i would i would be more aware of the fact oh they have a limp oh that means they're in pain mm. physically oh they that means there's also been a loss of, of mobility and it's changed their the very nature of their life you know and, or you see someone who's helping you and you say and you see for just a moment a glint that shows you there's a worry in their life you know it's just to be to be lord show me this person the way you see them is a, is a better way to say that prayer and uh, wow, it's amazing how it opens up your heart to people and to pray for them and to be able to affirm them, to say things to them that, you know, so often, Andreas, as I'm walk, walking along now, my wife and I, we see so many couples with, with babies, with a baby in the carriage. I always stop and we, we say hi to the baby. And then I look at the man and I just say, I'm so proud of you that you're a father and you're taking care of your family. And no one tells people that. You know, to be able to look at people and to affirm them. And so, so leaders, tell us more about how, how, what you teach. Because entrepreneurship, by its very nature, you're taking people into the unknown. And you're yeah. starting something, you're expanding something. But you know, Bear, it's, business is a very simple thing. We, we should not overcomplicate it. Business is, a, is one sentence. How may I help you? That's mm. business. Mm. And if I use my talents to help you, and I create value, meaning I, you're willing to pay more for what I did than it cost me to create it. Then I created value. Uh -huh. Value. Yeah. That's business. If I do, if I help you through my talents, and and it, and you value it more than what it cost me, you have a business. That's it. And so the the idea of that usually is, and I, I work with the students. I actually start a business with every freshman at the Catholic University of America's Bush Bush School of Business. Every freshman. First thing they do, I have 250 of them right now. They just started the business four weeks ago. And they come up, they show up having no idea that this is going to happen. Because think of this, how may I help you? And all you need is a thousand people that you can help and you have a, you, you're done. And this is, we're overthinking it. This is, this should be a pretty, e pretty easy equation to take care of. And it, the beauty of it is when you're also seeing this to say, that I can now use my talents to create value, which is to create value that was not existing before, then you're making something out of nothing. Mm, it's creative. You know, only one person can do this, and that's God. So when you're doing this, you're participating. God allows you into his creativity. And it's, it's like you continue to the, the, the creation of the world through being a business person to create value. And it's just, that's a holy thing that we can do. And when we're doing this for the right reasons, then we imitate God. We, we create goods that are truly good. You know, we provide services that truly serve. To ti voglio bene, right? To, to help people to go to heaven and to become holy. And that is the core of what John Paul taught in his theology of the body, of what business is all about. So powerful. So the, the purpose of business, in, its, in essence, is to provide value, to add value. To provide to create to, to value create value to serve others yeah. Yeah. and and so how can you have the uh, social justice warriors come yelling at you to say you're a capitalist and, and and I don't care if I bought my shirt from you I still <laughs> you know that you know the, the it, it's a it's a it's a jaded concept yeah. 
Yeah. And that's See, why there are valid yeah. issues. That, there are valid issues. But one of the things that John Paul objected to is to say, look, as soon as we say there's only one set amount of money in the world, we're already we're, it's right. Always, we're already we're, crea wrong we're creating. We create money every day. It's so not the a issue zero sum is game. Never who has how much money. It's who has access. And what, what John Paul defined, he said, poverty is not uh, having limited resource, limited, uh, a limited amount of what he says are imagined finite resources. He says, that's not it. It's not being poor is not having little money. And, and then they said, well, what is it? Then? And he said, being poor is to be excluded from networks of productivity and exchange, because that's where to create, that's where that's you create true. value. Yeah. And that is always connected with work, right? And so being poor is to be excluded from work. So if mm. you want to solve poverty, guys, let's create work and let the human spirit become creative and create this value, which, by the way, we measure value with money. And that also reignites in the person who's not working this ability to imitate God through their work, which is a part of the well, wait a minute. But God doesn't. God doesn't work, does he? He just sits around with his arms folded and judges us. No, Jesus said, "Even now, the Father and I, we work, yeah. and He gets things done. He He doesn't. Yeah. He, he, he with all the determination and fortitude it takes to be on the cross, and say these words: It is finished. He got the job done, and He works. Yeah. And work is you a blessing. But you know, we got to have you back because we're running out of time. Yeah, give me, give me your wrap-up yeah. statement. Give, give me one plug. So I, if you're interested in this concept, I just developed this project called The Gospel of Work. Mm. It's at siokacenter.com, one word, siokacenter.com. Mm. And in it, I, I provide eight videos that really lead you along the way to go deeper with your work, with your daily work, to make it more spiritual, to understand how this, mm -hmm. this is this God-given power where you participate in the continuation of creation. Praise God. It, it helped me a lot, and I want to share with everybody so they can watch this series and, and benefit from that as well. Well, maybe we can have you back, and we can talk a little talk story more about that. We've run over by a minute and 30 seconds, but when you're talking to a Swiss Army guard who was personal body protector for Pope St. John Paul II, you give him the extra time. Until next week, Andreas Widmer, your website again is? Andreas-Widmer.com. Till next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit Aloha, you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wilding Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wilding Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.